Hello and welcome to DIY Give It A Try. My name is Michelle Edhouse and in this video I'm going to take you through the steps I took to build this jig. Now, looks a bit weird and wonky but what it is, is it allows me to attach my router. You could also do it with one that attached your jigsaw if you wanted to and to create a, uh, an oval. Yes, we can cut out ovals. <laughs> so, this is the oval that I cut out in the video. Um, see, it's made of MDF. And then I painted it on my other channel, Mickey Art. And uh, the cool thing about this jig is you can make it bigger or smaller um, using the different holes and so I also use the same jig to cut out ooh, this one. <laughs> Again, you can check out the painting video on Mickey Art. Um, but this jig is it's quite a bit of process required. I'm not saying the way I make it is the most ideal method, but this is what you're after at the end of it. You're after something that's got a channel for these pieces to slide up and down in. That's not going anywhere because it's got my, the screws. Um, and another channel going the other way so that piece can slide up and down. And between those two being fixed to this, it makes an oval. So let's get started. Okay, so what I did was I started off by chopping a couple of bits the same size so that I could work with them a little bit easier. Um, I then tilted the drop saw over onto, um, <coughs> onto an angle and I used the same angle for all my cuts and that way they could all work together which was really, really easy. <coughs> what you'll see is I've put a piece of um, a blank wood at the back there as a backstop and what that created was a space where I wasn't cutting through my back um, guard board at the back and wasn't cutting bits off that um, but still able to cut all the way through and um, so then once I'd cut all my pieces and um, I'll have a a diagram available for you. I then tried laying them out on the board and um, sanded all my pieces up so that they could they weren't ha didn't have all rough edges to catch on each other. So once I'd kind of laid them up, I realised that I did need to have them the same length. As each other so what I did was I set up a stop block on my drop saw brought my drop saw back up to 90 degrees and just trimmed them all to roughly the same size and that just made it easier for assembly and getting things to line up and look right quick sand of those new cuts and we're ready to start assembling so what I did first was put one piece in the corner and then worked from there. And what you see here is I clamped a straight edge across so that I could then line up the two pieces. Um, I've used glue and screws in these. So um, I've put glue in, clamped it down in the place I wanted and then two screws on the diagonal and you'll see later why I put them on the diagonal. So then the next bit again did the same thing, line them up nice and straight, clamp them in position, glue them um, and just always making sure that the um, 
that the little slidey block slides <laughs> otherwise it's going to be a bit of a pain um, I'm, I'm sure there's a, another way of doing this that would be a little bit more accurate uh, but this is the way I did it you'll also notice if I get my arm out of the way that um, I've got numbers on each of the pieces and what I've done that for is so that I've got a slider numbered two and then the bits where that slider is going to slide through are also numbered two and then the other slider is numbered one and all the bits that need to line up along that line are going to be need to be straight as well so that's what the numbers are on there and it worked out really well it helped me to get the pieces in the right places and line everything up so that they all slide, slid well this last piece was a bit of a bit annoying to try and get in place because I realized that I wasn't going to be able to get the clamp in from either direction so then um, I just I put the screws in place made sure it was all lined up and then just screwed them down hard without clamping at first wasn't as accurate and I do regret that now having having used it it's not quite as accurate as it could be so my suggestion would be to cut that baseboard down so you can get a clamp in there and get it right before you screw it down um, it was a lot of fiddling which could have been avoided by chopping that piece down um, so learn from my mistakes do this these next two chops first and then do that corner piece so then I went round and I cut off the corners and this is why I put the screws in diagonally across so that I could cut those off and it kind of makes a rough oval a very square looking oval but um, it does need to be have those corners chopped off so that you can get the the router round all the edges so I started off by um, grabbing this piece of five millimeter um, plastic out of my husband's <laughs> backyard um, and I used this square just to roughly halve it but draw an even line just um, by running the square down and with the pen on the end there and then I used a handsaw to cut through it um, I did try and um, to try and use the drop saw but I uh, yeah that was not a <laughs> not a safe thing but a kickback going on so um, I resorted to the old hand saw and it did a brilliant job it was just really easy to cut through and um, managed to stay on the line quite nicely so I was quite proud of myself with that <laughs> how does it get any better so this, uh, I asked Glenn what the plastic is and he said it, yeah, it's just 5mm thick um, HPE, so basically what milk bottles are made out of. But basically you can use any piece of wood for this, you could use a bit of plywood, you could use a... Um, any anything really that has got some some self-supporting strength to it um, and isn't too thick I, I quite like this 5mm because the screws of my um, my router that hold the base plate on fit through it quite nicely so once I had chopped it through I just grabbed some 60 grit sandpaper and gave it a rub down just to get rid of the big um, chunky saw um, <laughs> saw bits 
Okay, so now that we've got this all made and we've got this made, what I realized was when this was sitting up on top of here, if we mounted the router on here, the router bit would have to go through this, all of this before it even touched our, um, our stock that we wanted to cut. Now that's not, not feasible. So I'm going to make a step down platform and that's consisting of two bits of wood and another piece of this which the router will then be attached to. So let's get that all joined together. I need to cut this down, make it into a piece for the router and let's get going. Right, so this is our router and basically what we're going to be doing is replacing this black piece with this white piece. So I need to take that off. And not lose the screws. So we'll put those in there. So there we go, there's our router bed and pretty much what we're going to need to do is have that much plus enough for the wood so I'm gonna trace around that where our drill holes are, screw holes need to be, and we also need some holes in there for the pressure of the, um, as the plungy thing goes up and down, lets the air out down there, I think that's what those holes are for, that goes to there and then we need that to come to there so. okay so gonna get the hacksaw out and give this a chopping <laughs> How's it gonna be better? Where is my hacksaw? Wonder if the jigsaw will cut this. Right, I'm going to give this a go with the jigsaw. No idea if it'll work. So I found that, yes, the jigsaw did cut um, the, the plastic okay. This is on five times speed, by the way. <laughs> um, but I had the blade running at such a speed that it was actually melting the plastic back into place instead of dropping the chippings out 
So on the second cut, I slowed the blade speed down and uh, it cut through quite nicely. So the next step was to find some drill bits that matched the hole sizes in the original plate that had come off the router. Um, you want to make sure that the holes are big enough for the screws to go through but not fall all the way through. Uh, so that was the first bit I did. I drilled the holes for that. And then with the larger drill, I not only drilled the holes for the bolt piece. So there's a couple of screw heads that need to be able to stick through those holes. But I also used that same drill bit as a countersink. And really important when you're doing this countersinking um, to check that you've got far enough. And if it is far enough, stop. <laughs> and you'll see why in just a second. This was almost perfect. And I gave it one more go and it went all the way through, which then left my piece of um, plastic without anything for the, dr the screw to hold on to. So you'll see I'm a lot more careful on these next three screws. Ideally all four would have been countersunk but it did still hold quite nicely um, only with the three the sc screws holding on so it could have been more perfect but it wasn't oh well, how's it get any better than that I then switched down to a really small drill just to drill the little holes for the um, hydraulic lifty outlet. It doesn't need to be much, it just needs to be able to let the air pressure out. And then next up we are cutting out our piece from the overall board. Please excuse the wobble of the camera. I was really surprised when I saw this had happened um, but hey how's it getting any better than that then we're on to testing making sure all the holes line up making sure that it's going to just screw on nicely obviously you need to check with it up the right way because your screws need to go into the countersink si sink side of the plate and as per anything with woodworking, there's the sanding, getting rid of all those burrs and all those um, saw marks. But not just that, also around all the um, all the drill holes. I found that a sharp knife was really good for this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to screw the screw and glue these two bits together so that they're the right thickness, and then I'm going to put some screw holes through these two bits and use slightly shorter screws to hold. Let's see how that goes.
thing we need to do is drill a hole in there. So what I did was I put a piece of um, rough timber down just so that I could make sure that I don't drill holes in my bench once I go through the plastic. Um, and I used a one inch paddle bit just to drill through um, and clean that up with the sharp knife again. Just make sure that there's nothing that's going to scratch the wood as you cruising along. Uh, if I did it again, I would definitely make that hole bigger. Why? Because, um, as you'll see when I actually do the cutting, the, um, the sawdust can't escape out with the, such a small hole. Um, so, yeah, there is a reason why they have those big holes in the bottom of your router. So I've just discovered. So put it all back together again. Um, I did put an extra little bit of plastic in that hole where I had um, gone right through with the countersink. And that did help add a little bit of strength. So now we're moving on to actually cutting an oval. Yay! So what I'm doing here is drilling, um, screwing the base unit onto the wood that I'm going to be cutting. Uh, what that does is just secures it, make sure it doesn't go sliding all over the place, which is obviously a good target. Highly recommend you do this to the underside of your wood that you're planning to cut. That way the holes are on the underside uh, and there's less cover up work required. So I've got the router set um, at the moment just with a couple of nails through into the um, swivelly bits just to try it out <clears throat> and in a minute I'll change those over to being screws but I just wanted to check that this was going to work you know the whole you've, you've made it is it going to work and as you can see, it's not particularly smooth. And this is where that accuracy that I talked about earlier is, becomes important. So uh, this is where I'm just taking those nails out, holding it in place and screwing straight in. The screws will hold the unit together a little bit stronger. It'll help to have more of a smooth run their nails that weren't in tight <laughs> um so yeah making sure that your pieces are all cut in a nice straight line and they um stay together is quite important well my interesting point of view anyway <laughs> um and also having yeah, having, having the bits all the same angle and line up so that the sliders can slide. Just see here, it doesn't quite, you've got to kind of jilt it a bit. And that's that does create a bit of a, a wonk in the cut, which adds extra sanding basically is what, what happens there. But I was quite happy with the way this all worked once I had it screwed in so then it was time to cut how exciting um what would i do different here i would secure the piece that i'm cutting to so it doesn't fly around all over the place but you'll see what i mean by that in a second and you'll also see here i'm plugging in last thing I do is plug in, so all that playing around with the router has been with it turned off.
See what I mean? It's a bit of a pain to have two hands on the router and trying to hold the board in, in place. Now, it does, if, depending on how thick your board that you're cutting is, it really depends on how, um, how deep you need to go on that first cut. I went round about four times, just pushing the blade down a little bit more each time, and as it got further and further down, we got further and further through the board. Um, really, you don't want to be going plunging all the way through and trying to cut that much in one go. It's gonna, you're gonna burn your edges, really. So. I'd made it round once and as you can see here basically I left behind me <laughs> a filled in gap you can almost hardly see where I've cut uh, but hey you know it worked it went round in an oval yay clean up time so I just got the vacuum out and went round and sucked out all that sawdust to make room to come round and do the next plunge and rotate as I said, I went round about four times, each time following behind with the vacuum cleaner. Yum, 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 yum. Vacuum cleaner got to eat lots and lots of MDF that day. <laughs> and again. And again. Oh, maybe I went around five times. Look at that. I lost count, I went around so many times. Well, maybe I went around six times. Goodness me, I really did take it easy on my first trip round. Oh, we're up to seven. I think this is the last one. Um, once you get all the way through, guys, I really highly recommend that you make sure that what's... Um, you're not going to hit metal. I've got metal um, saw stools under there and when I was cutting my second one I ended up with hitting the metal and um, <laughs> the router didn't really like routing metal to be honest. So I'm just unscrewing our jig and router off our oval and having a look. Yay! Success! Whoop, whoop. How does it get better than that? So we've got two small little holes. That'll be the back. And then got some cleaning up to do around here. There's a couple of little gimme bits where it was coming loose at the bottom um, but go around that with the, the round over bit and we'll see what magic we can create okay so I have put the chamfer bit on and I'm just going to go around and chamfer those edges um, it's not a round over bit as I thought it was so Oh well, how's it getting any better? As normal, headphones, glasses. Now, because I was using a bit that follows this, when I got to these bits, it followed them, and we've got a little, little interesting dippy bits where it's followed those bits. So I'll go around it with the sander, clean those up, and then come back and do the chamfer bit again. But I'm pretty happy with that as my first go. I made the jig.
I made the jig and I used the router to cut it out and chamfer it and it looks awesome and it can get better how does it get better what's required to not get these weird little bits so thanks for joining me in this mammoth video um, I hope you have fun with it whether you use this to create tabletops or um, to create boards to paint on like I did what magic can you create now that you know how to cut ovals what else is possible if you also want to know how to do a um, a circle that one's super super easy check out my other video up in the uh, links in the description or wherever you look uh, <laughs> and um, hey if you like my style of video please hit the subscribe button come play with me for future videos um, this is actually a family channel my kids and my husband will be joining me occasionally for things from anywhere from cooking and sewing to woodworking, concrete placing, all sorts of stuff. We're not professionals. We've t we're self-taught and we're just sharing what we've learned with you. Hence the name DIY, give it a try. In some cases, these videos is us giving it a try. <laughs> How's it getting any better and how much fun can you have? and you're willing to give something a go. Till next video, see ya.